here in Davos for the World Economic Forum with Sherry Blair. Sherry, thank you for being on the show with us today. It's my pleasure. So I want to start talking about a topic I know you're very passionate about, is female empowerment. Because there's a lot of initiatives you're doing, others are doing on this topic. How do you think we can use technology to really achieve our goals better when it comes to female empowerment? Well, I think technology has had a huge part to play in increasing female economic empowerment mm -hmm. and has a even bigger part to play in the future, I think. Why do I say that? I think because um, my foundation uses technology, mm -hmm. which enables us to reach women in more places. So for example, we have a global mentoring platform yep. where we match men and women mentors across the globe with women entrepreneurs in over a hundred countries. Now you couldn't do that if it wasn't for the fact we were based on the web yeah. and therefore these conversations occur over the web. Yeah. And so that, that, that's something that couldn't have happened 20 years ago, for sure. And then the other thing that we do is we use the mobile phone. Awesome. The mobile phone is the poor person's access to the great big outside world there because through the mobile phone, you can access information through the mobile phone. You can make contacts through the mobile phone. You can do selling through the mobile phone. You can access finance. And all these things are then available to people in geographies and in remote parts of the world and in, in, in disadvantaged parts, even in our yep. big city, who otherwise haven't had that sort of access. And you believe the female empowerment, but also the financial inclusion issue is a bigger problem when it comes in develop, developing markets and you know, lower income cities as well? It's a really big problem across the world. Now, every year, the World Economic Forum produce a global gender gap report yep. and they look at the difference of access to men and women in four areas. The fourth area is economic access, economic empowerment. And this year they've reported that actually, unlike the other areas, it's gone back in relation to women's wow. economic empowerment. So it now instead it's gonna be 257 years before women and men get equal access to economic opportunities. And that's 55 years more than they reported last year. Now, why is that? Cool. I tell you why it is. It's partly to do with technology, actually, because much of the automation that's come in has actually transformed women's jobs. So women are losing jobs in some sectors that are now automated. And at the same time, new jobs are being created, but they're being created in STEM sectors. The other reasons, of course, are the societal views about what is a woman's role, which actually infects every nation across the world, but is a particular problem in low and middle income countries. And then, of course, the perennial problem of childcare, because women are often literally left holding the baby and they have to conduct their economic activities at the same time as uh, supporting their families. So let's focus on the STEM issue. Obviously, you mentioned that STEM education is not, I mean, we need more women to study those topics. Do you think, what's the solution to that? Should we use more technology? Is it more with educational programs? How can we address that issue? Well, first of all, I'd say the solution doesn't only lie in education, or at least not in school education. I think we also have to look at throughout life education and not automatically assume that because a woman perhaps didn't study STEM subjects in school, that that doesn't mean that she isn't capable of learning and, and developing into a STEM person Absolutely. later on. So it's not just an education issue. The second thing is, of course, it's an issue, as I mentioned before, about the views about what is appropriate for a woman to do. And there's still too many countries that don't think women uh, are equipped um, or societies that think women should be concentrated in the home. That's their job. And therefore, the societal pressures against women actually doing something which is seen as a, a male domain. The world of work is a male domain. Technology, even more so. Science, even more so. So what message would you have? I'm a young father. I have an almost four-year-old daughter, actually. Uh -huh. What would you do? What message would you have, always to mothers, but also to fathers when it comes to their, how we can change this problem and actually lead by example? Well, abs you're absolutely right that this cannot be a conversation only about mothers. Yeah. It has to be a conversation about parents. It has to be a conversation about women as well uh, as men. And men have a lot to do with this because after all, men are the people who still dominate the positions of power. Mm -hmm. And if they don't understand why it's important, um, then uh, we're never going to achieve that. Now, why is it important? Well, my foundation did a report last year with 
uh, the BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, and we decided that if women had equal access, if the women entrepreneurs was had equal access to men entrepreneurs, you could add five trillion dollars to the world economy. So. It's important for governments to understand if you don't use the resources of 50% of your population, you're missing out. It's important in families. So many of the women where we where we work, uh, we, we work with, um, are actually supporting not just themselves but others. So a survey we did of our women showed that 80% of them were supporting somebody else, wow. and th th over a third of them were supporting at least three more people. So we're we're talking about. Um, the impact by helping these women that they have on a much bigger community than just themselves. So we're in Davos this week. What message would you have to the CEOs in, in Davos this week when it comes on this topic? Business has a problem. You're not engaging enough with women, whether as your employees or as your suppliers or bringing women into the global workforce. We have to do more to make that happen. Excellent. Ms. Blair, we're going to do a fire round, a round of questions. The bell is with me here in Davos. So I'm going to ask you quick questions. I want one or two more dancers. Okay. And we're going to wake the bell and go through, uh, quick, we're going to go through these questions quickly. Ready? Here we go. What is the one course you recommend students at taking university today that you wish you had taken back in a day? Uh, science. science. I'm, I'm useless, useless at science. <laughs> That's why we went to law school. So, you know. what, what, what's the, what, your favorite thing to do in your spare time? Read. I read. Very good. What's keeping you up at night right now? Uh, worrying about the future for my grandchildren now that I have three and two more on the way. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> if you're not a lawyer, what other profession would you want to do? Uh, I'd like to be an entrepreneur. In fact, I think I am an entrepreneur in many ways. If, let's say, you had to go back to your 20s again, what country, not the UK, you think you would go and move and live right now? But today, yeah. uh, I would actually... Go to Africa because I think Africa is going to be a real boom place in the next 20 years. First time you met Tony Blair, what was your impression of him? Who is that posh boy? <laughs> <laughs> Two more. If, if there's one book you recommend everybody to read, what would that one book be? Well, I'm, I'm going to choose uh, uh, Middlemarch by George Eliot, which is an amazing book um, about uh, an amazing woman. And last question at Davos 2020, if you could have lunch with one person, anyone alive or dead, who would, I be dead? Who would, we, who would you have lunch with? <laughs> How? <laughs> That's too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks for being with us today. Enjoy the rest of your time at Davos. Thanks for the interview today.